Lancaster, California cops were in the search for a wanted parolee. Unfortunately, they raided the home of the wrong couple and started firing uh, their guns. In fact, they shot 15 rounds and uh, a man by the name of Angel Mendez was struck 10 times and that resulted in him losing his leg. His pregnant wife was also hit once and she feared that she might lose the baby, but thankfully she did not. She's healthy. Uh, Angel Men uh, Mendez is also healthy, but as I mentioned, he lost his leg. Now, uh, a federal judge has awarded the couple $4 million as a result of this exception force and this ridiculous police brutality. So I'm glad they at least got some degree of justice, uh, which doesn't always happen these days. But this goes to our talk about police state. Shoot first, ask questions later. I mean, you remember the old movies where they'd say, uh, freeze, put your hands up, right? Yeah, drop the, or drop, even drop the weapon. Drop the weapon, right? They, it's the wrong house. They didn't even ask. They just go literally firing in. Yeah, Mendez said that they like shot their way through the front door and that, um, you know, he, he does concede that there was a BB gun on his bed. It looked like a rifle. It looked like a rifle. Um, and he said that like he, he did not grab the rifle to like shoot at the cops or the BB gun to shoot at the cops. He just like wanted to move it away, push it away so he could get up. But in the process of doing that, I guess the cops thought that he was going to try to shoot them and then they immediately started shooting at him. But it's, it's such a, I mean, it's a scary situation. They're, first of all, in the wrong house. And imagine that the couple is asleep when this is happening. They're asleep and they bust through the door and you're like disoriented. Yeah, like you don't why, know what's going to on. To some extent, why couldn't he have picked up the gun? Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, if you have no idea who's coming into your house, isn't like, don't gun owners always say, oh, the first thing I get to do is shoot you in the head if you're coming to my house. He doesn't know they're cops. He could, they could be crackheads or whatever, right? So, but that's why we used to say, drop your weapon. Right, like we right. used to yeah, have yeah, like yeah. a moment. And yes, does that right. moment in, in imperil the cops a little bit? You know, just a certain percentage? I think it does, right? I, but that's what your cops, because you you we pay you to take that risk, and I don't take it lightly. Well, you know, but because I, you could be going into the wrong house. We, we're not only paying them to take that risk; we're paying them to be trained better than a pedestrian or some regular Joe or whatever who has a judge. There's a judgment one must make when you're face to face with someone with a BB gun. Mm -hmm. Do I shoot 10 times and blow this person away, or do I engage them and say, hey, drop the weapon, put your hands up, get on the floor, or whatever that we've seen in movies, but we expect more. I mean, that's when it, when it comes down to these sort of blurred lines with like, there's a weapon in there and there's not. It's like, they're trained. They're supposed to have a higher degree of training. Yeah, that's the, the thing, they're expert. Right, they should, they're, they're right. No, and, we, and we give them a gun and permission to use it. Yeah, you know, well, and, and with that comes an enormous degree of responsibility and expectation yeah. of what your behavior might be. I also, you know, and I, I'd love to have a serious kind because I say this and I, and not knowing and not having gone through police training, but I've read it enough, and I've read a lot of books about cops written by police reporters, written by cops, people who are sympathetic to police, as I am. Like, you're never supposed to shoot to wound, right? And I don't. Quite why? get why, right? Like, obviously, well, no, you no, know why. no, no, I know why, because of course, then they could still have their weapon. But in some circumstances, again, it's about, it goes to what you said. Like, well, so maybe there's a little more risk. But again, like it ends up being that they got to shoot a guy 10 times. Like he had a BB gun. How did he get shot 10 times? Because he was still moving and he was probably still trying. He was in a state of probably absolute shock moving his body all over the place just as someone would with 10 cops on them beating them. Sure, right, you yeah. Would, you would be freaking out for, this is, you're dying. You're dying. You're gonna do everything you can to fight back. And that's often then misidentified, mistaken for fighting back or being aggressive. And that's where the training comes in. You're supposed to know the difference in and, these and, situations. And, and, and I they, wanted to say one more thing about the training. Uh, that's what I'm worried about, that we're not really training them that much anymore to, to say, hey, you know what, put the weapon down, and, and we're not training them, hey, you've got the awesome responsibility. Now, I'm being unfair, I'm sure that many of the comps we're, we're, across we're, the country are being trained that mm -hmm. way, but it seems to me that we're tilting the scales uh, on the side of, go ahead and shoot first, don't take any risks. 
And because we're all constantly doing overwhelming force right, yeah. and we've come to believe yeah. that that's the right thing to do yeah. when it isn't. That's